Welcome to Salem Park as we start preparing for the first King's birthday parade to be held on Monday. My name is Retired Captain Peter W. A. White and I'm speaking to you from the actual grounds here at Salem Park. And looking around, we see that the crowd is picking up. The officials are getting themselves in their rightful places. The troops are assembling. We have the younger ones, the brownies and the rangers and gathering actual places on the park. If it, you can hear in the distance, the band leading the troops on their way here to Salem Park. We expect this to be a uh, notable occasion. As I said before, it is the first uh, military parade celebrating the King's birthday here at Montreux for quite some time. Uh, today, we expect to have mostly local troops on parade. Um, we will say more about that as the time gets closer. But music will be provided by the Antigua and Barbuda uh, Police Band. Again, the celebrated location of Salem Park um, is being brought, um, brought out today. Those who are listening to us on the radio, if you can also look at us, on the Government Information Unit uh, YouTube page, you will be able to see the actual activities taking place here. Um, the program is also being streamed on the GIU Facebook page, and uh, commentaries will be carried live on ZJB uh, Radio Montreal. Yes, so we see the troops coming up on the northern side of the park, and they'll be making their way around um, on the eastern road, um, across the residence of Mr. Greenaway and then entering the park. The focus thereon will be on the troops as they come onto the park. So, um, you're not missing anything here. As I said, the, the general public is gathering and the officers and the key personnel are getting themselves in the uh, rightful places. I will now make my way back to the commentary booth where I will be joined by my colleagues and we will make every effort to bring you uh, commentary on all the activities here uh, this morning. So in the commentary booth with me this morning, um, providing commentary, we have retired uh, commanding officer of the Royal Montreal uh, Defense Force, Major Joseph Gabriel Lynch, MBE. And we also have retired uh, commanding officer, Captain, retired captain I should say, um, Captain John Richard Servitan Sterich, CBE. And between the three of us, we will try our best to, as I say, bring you um, direct. Behind us and to the left, we have the Center Hills, which is beautifully green, which reminds us that Montserrat is still the Emerald Isle of the Caribbean. Center Hills, by the way, is the area where we get most of our domestic water supply from. So it always has an abundance of rain, even when no place else on the island seems to be raining. Over to you, Captain Terry. Oh, thank you, Peter. Let me just say good morning to all our radio listeners and those who are listening by virtue of the internet or World Wide Web. Um, it's a pleasant day. Uh, I, I, I am delighted to be here at this time, given the import of the, the, the ceremony. The it's in the first place, it is the first King's Birthday Parade. And Listen, sometimes you hesitate because you're so accustomed to saying Queen's Birthday Parade that <laughs> saying King's Birthday Parade takes a little time and get, takes a little getting into. The second reason why I'm happy is that we celebrate the 125th year of the Defense Force. Um, and I am pleased that I was a part of its development, and I'm sure everyone here in the studio is happy for that. Um, I look at 
where they have been, where they have come, and maybe sometime during the, the, the broadcast, we can talk about the future and where they're going so that they last another 100 years and more. Thank you, Peter, back to you. Yes, thank you very much, um, Captain Skerritt. And if you're watching us on the YouTube or on the GIU Facebook page, you will be seeing the troops are now um, on parade and led by the Antigua and Barbuda a Police Force Band. And the contingent behind is the contingent from the Royal Montserrat Defense Force. Then a contingent of the Royal Montserrat Police Service and a very small contingent, but very um, innovative for this year, from the Marine Unit, um, made up of six cadets and two Marine officers from the Marine Unit of the Montreal <coughs> Police Service. Then we have what we call the regulars um, of the Cadet Corps, those bearing arms, and a good group of recruits who have done everything possible so that they can be on parade this morning. So those are the ones you see marching on at this time. Um, already on parade, we would, have had, we would see a small contingent from the Montserrat Fire and Rescue Service. There should be a contingent from the Montserrat Prison Service. And then we will have um, a contingent of girl guides, brownies, and um, the young ones, I think they call them, were the rangers? Yes, 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 the young ones. So they, they are, there they are for now, and it's still what we call getting ready time for, for, for so don't be surprised if a few other persons uh, uh, would join them um, as we're getting ready, as the official start of the parade would begin with the arrival of the acting uh, premier this morning. And we will explain that when we get to that point, and then followed by, by, by the governor. So why are we here today? Why are we here today? We will recall that the late Queen Elizabeth's birthday was on the 21st of April, and it was decided that the formal celebrations to, um, you know, in that regard, in terms of a military parade and all the other celebrations, will take, would normally take place on the second Saturday in the month of June each year. King Charles ascended to the throne last year. His actual birthday is November the 14th. It was decided that the formal celebration or celebrations and related military parades will take place on the third Saturday in the month of June henceforth. This year, the third Saturday falls on today, the 17th of June, and for Montserrat, on Monday the 19th of June has been declared a public holiday. Comrades, it has been a busy period for military activities on Montserrat. Looking back at, um, you know, let's say even from January last year to now, we, we, we could try and just quickly glance, glance through some of the military um, and, and ceremonial functions that our troops have been called on to, to, to perform in. Um, for example, if my recollection um, is right, uh, help me out here, Major. Was it in March sometime last year? March 7th. March 7th. That's when we had the departure of the then governor. Uh, right? And then, of course, the usual ceremony that goes with that. At the airport. At the airport, right. And then the arrival of the governor thing took place sometime in April. Um, what day was that again? That was April the 6th. The 6th. April, right, April, April, April the 6th. Okay. And so we had the arrival and the swearing in of our current governor, um, Sarah Tucker. And we will talk later about um, the, the number of governors and those who have served in Montserrat as governor. You're not missing anything. The troops on, on the parade square are getting themselves in their rightful places. The company, the RSM, Barry Carlyle Williams, is taking charge. He's making sure that they're properly aligned and properly dressed as we speak. So if you're watching it on TV, that is actually what is taking place um, at this time. So back to the issues from last year. In June last year um, was a big thing here for us um, and throughout the realm, I should say, because we celebrated the platinum um, jubilee celebrations of Her Majesty the Queen at, the, at that time. On Montserrat, we had quite a number of activities. For example, um, we had actually, I think it was a four or five day weekend um, in celebration. Thursday, the 2nd of June was a public holiday. 
Friday the 3rd of June was also a public holiday and the Queen's birthday parade was held um, at that time. And then we have the Saturday the 4th and the Sunday, the 5th weekend days. And then Monday, the, the 6th of June at that time, was Week Monday. So while it may not be directly associated with the Platinum celebrations itself, it was a public holiday for us here in Montserrat. So that was a very um, active weekend, um, I must say. And, and, and for that, um, you know, we, we felt the celebrations here on, um, on island. Back on the parade square, we see um, Barry Carlisle has now, the, the RSM for the parade, has ensured that the troops are in order. And he's now handing over to Captain Glenroy Foster, the parade to IC. And he will make, continue with the alignments by giving the dressings and so on, and uh, have everything prepared so that when the parade commander comes on, he, everything would be, uh, what should I say, in place. So you're not missing anything um, from us here in the, in the, in, in the, um, on the field while we in the commentary continue talking. Any, anything you want to talk to us about um, that took place um, about the, during the platinum activities? Anybody recall anything else? Well, uh, I... There was a series I, I, well, of ceremonies, uh, yes. for example. Yeah, I, um, yeah. I was off island, but um, uh -huh. I, based on what I've heard and mm -hmm. listened to, um, you had a series of medals um, given. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's between 13 and 30. Um, it was held in on to honor the uniformed personnel who have served five or more years with the Royal Montreal Defense Force, Royal Police Force, Her Majesty's Prison, and the Fire and Rescue Services. Right, right. right. All right. Mm -hmm. Also, we had the Queen Platinum Jubilee Beacon Lighting Ceremony on the 2nd of June at Little Bay, mm -hmm. which took the form of an outdoor concert featuring national performances. Mm -hmm. And on the 3rd, you had a Queen's Platinum full ceremonial parade at Salem Park. And that's beautiful, at least, I think, um, Monstrat itself, um, in, in, in honoring the Queen, did an exceptional job. As I said, I wasn't here to see, witness it, but um, I saw it on, on television. And that, yes, that is what is important. Indeed. Yes. All right, so on the parade, as it, uh, um, so the parade to IC, um, Captain Glenroy Foster has now taken over from Barry Carlisle Williams. He is now ordering the troops um, on parade to um, fix bayonets. I think that's what they are doing there and getting themselves prepared um, before the officers are. Uh, then instructed to, to fall in. To take so, their positions. Yeah, yes. to take the rightful positions. And the officers we're talking about here are the, are the unit commanders for the armed guard um, on parade today. Yes, so um, back to last year. So th that was big celebration in June. Big celebration in June it was. Uh, let, then, let, yes. let, let me comment, you know, because sometimes you're looking at the parade and you have to say that the military understands hierarchy. Mm -hmm. The parade sergeant major, who is in charge of the men, mm -hmm. bringing them on, 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 on the parade square, and then he hands over to the parade t to IC, mm -hmm. who then hand over. And right. that's something that presents order mm -hmm. within the force because of the military's way of sticking to hierarchy. Right, right, indeed, indeed. All right, so we see the, the, the unit commanders taking up their rightful places um, in, in front of the parade, awaiting the order of the, the, parade, the parade to IC for them to fall in. And today, I just want to um, explain some issues as it relates to some uniform. You, if you're watching it on GRU, whether it be overhead as showing now, or from one of the frontal cameras, you will note that I think there are four persons that are wearing a unique piece of, wearing um, unique piece of uniform that we have not seen before. And these were the four senior persons who attended the coronation of His Majesty the King. And they were issued with um, that specific uniform for that purpose, and they are allowed to wear it thereafter. So, you will see Barry, um, um, Sergeant Major Barry Carlisle Williams in what they, they refer to as a dark blue. If you're looking at it, um, you may say it's black, but it is blue, and that's the official word. I can't say anything different from that. And then you have the parade 
um, commander. Um, you'll see him marching on in a minute. Um, Captain Fergus wearing that same shade. And you will see also Colonel Alvin Everton Ryan wearing that, 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 that um, color. The other person who will be wearing that is yet to be here, and that is the ADC to the governor. The ADC to the governor was one of the persons who was part of the contingent that went up to the UK for the purposes of, of the coronation. We, we say welcome to the commentary uh, grouping, to our colleague, James White. Um, James White, I'm not going to put any military title to him because he didn't stay long enough in the cadet corps to get one. But James, we say welcome um, to the commentary board. Always a pleasure to be with the cadet team. Okay, so we were saying that last year, and we we're hoping the see how we could get to this. Um, continuing after that excellent um, piece of celebration in June, we then went on to, to we then went on to September, where we. Um, well, you know, um, we then suffered some what should I say, some should I say bad news? All in. It's very bad, very bad news. Yeah, tell us about that, um, yeah. Captain Skett. Yes, and we witnessed the passing of Her Majesty the Queen on the 8th of September 2022. Mm. And on Montserrat, uh, the following activities took place. The flag at the governor's office, of course, during these things were lowered to half mass. Mm -hmm. On the 8th of September, all the other flags flown officers on and warrant officers commanding guards Lord to half mask mm -hmm. um, the governor made a Outward public statement turn. and the premier also made a public statement on the 9th of september um, a 96 gun salute by the representatives of the royal monster defense force and to your the post. royal monster police force march um, saluted the passing at little bay playing field to mark the, mm -hmm. the, the, the the life of the queen mm -hmm. on the 9th of september also f a formal opening of the book of condolences at the governor's office members of the public were officers and warrant officers commanding guards um during that period there are a few other things but to i don't know unit. if you want to comment on Show. what is happening on the field at the moment ah. okay right so um if you're listening um you would you'll be hearing the the, the voice of the parade commander. He's been mic'd for this purpose so that those who are watching and listening on the radio can hear him uh, when we want you to hear him. But um, at the moment, the, the, we are going through a little uh, process by which the unit commanders are being followed in and under the instructions of the parade commander. Now, I think it's appropriate to say at this time that um, it is with some regret that we do not have the expected unit from the Senkits uh, Defense Force. Um, those of us who have um, copies of the printed program um, would see that there's mention there of that unit, and it, you know, it is simply because of operational issues back in Senkits why they were not able to make the journey. The intention was for them to arrive very early this morning and spend the day here with us parading and then depart sometime later this evening or early morning. But um, when we got that news late yesterday afternoon, of course, it is with some regret. But the show continues, Continue. right? Uh, but so it's always a little disappointed hey! when mm -hmm. you have, you know, it's always exciting when you have Stand a joining us, hey! you know, and it enhances the parade. Stand oh, easy. Good. Yes. Okay. So the parade commander, um, uh, Captain um, Colin Fergus, is now in charge, and he has now stand the troops um, at ease, and we now await the formal arrivals and we will bring that to you as they take place. But continuing with the activities, um, you know, um, uh, ceremonial activities, let's come to this year. I think early this year, in, in April or something. Yes. Well, well the, 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 there are just a few more things that happened oh. during September. Ah, yes, yes. And the signing of the register, you, you, you could sign on Monday the 12th, the mm -hmm. 13th, the 14th, the 15th, and the 16th. Mm -hmm. um, you had an opportunity, the public had an opportunity to sign the, the Book of Condolences. On the 11th of September, the proc proc uh, um, proclamation of the new monarch was made by the governor, mm -hmm. um, Sarah Tucker, at Salem Park at 7.45 mm -hmm. um, a.m. And the state funeral for Her Majesty took place on Monday, the 19th of September, 2022. Her Excellency, the <coughs> governor, the Honorable Premier, um, attended um, the funeral. Also attended was um, from the hour MPS, Royal Monster Police Force, was Sergeant Kirkbraid. Okay, 
And so at least we, we had our presence there. All right. So if you're watching us um, over via the YouTube, you will now we will ha we now have the first official arrival of the acting premier. The premier's vehicle is now on the park and been led by an outrider from the Royal Monswat uh, Police Service. And they're now coming around, and then they'll be greeted by the appropriate fanfare when they get to the right position. And then we will explain as we go along from there. So um, activities has formally begun here. Um, as it relates to the King's Birthday Parade um, as, uh, with the official arrival of the acting premier. But coming back to matter of ceremonials and, and activities that are taking place in Montserrat, um, let's come to this year then. Um, and anything um, we want to start off with? Well, of significance, we had the passing of um, Sir, the Honorable Sir R.L. Howard Archibald Fergus, KBE or EPH, passed away on the 26th of April. 2023. Mm -hmm. He was accorded full military funeral with mm -hmm. honors on Wednesday, 12 April 2023. <coughs> and also that day was declared to be a public holiday throughout the day and mornings throughout Monsoon. Mm -hmm. On the parade on that day, mm -hmm. we had the Antigua and Barbuda Police Band, Royal Monsoon Defense Force, Royal Monsoon Police Service, and Secondary School Cadet Corps. <coughs> Right, indeed. Right. So we're now seeing the, the acting premier stepping out of the vehicle, and his ADC assigned for today is Superintendent of Police, um, Albert Williams. Albert Williams. And they will, he's escorted by the commanding officer of the Royal Montserrat uh, Defense Force and the Commission of Police as he makes his way to the DS um, to receive his first um, formal salute. The, the God! The flag, the monster flag will then um, be um, open or unfurled, unfurled, I should say, um, when he steps on the the dias. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, we will have to let the listeners know. Doctor, the Honourable Samuel Joseph is acting as premier. As yes, as premier. yes, yes. Because um, yes, hey! I should have said that. Substantive premier. General is the only salute. Present. So we go over to the parade Adams. commander. Yeah. And the band. Parade commander um, has just issued the formal welcome, I'll say, and greeting of the acting premier, uh, Dr. Samuel Joseph. And um, he's now going to take his seat um, in the rightful uh, place under the canopy provided for that purpose. We now see the motorcade for the Her Excellency the Governor now coming on to the park, um, led by the assigned uh, police outrider. The okay. commanding officer and the commissioner of police will now return to take up their rightful places um, to greet Her Excellency on her arrival. And it is appropriate, um, Peter, that we express thank you to the anti-defense uh, force police band. I mean, they have been serving us for some time now. And it is important that we give them a thank you, a big thank you for, for that purpose. Very much indeed. Uh, very much so indeed. We, I know we started our music program on Montserrat. Um, we had, um, I think we were able to get some, some instruments funded under the SCAF program, and there was a pro program being um, administered um, at the Deville Community Center. But um, due to the COVID um, mm -hmm. passing and so on, that program w w was um, suspended, mm -hmm. and we'll just be um, awaiting the 
the, the announcement of the time when it will be restarted. restarted. Okay. Right. So we have Her Excellency uh, Motorcade um, coming on to the parade um, square. But we go back to talk about um, some of the activities um, that we, we were, um, I think we were up to um, Sir Howard Fergus's mm -hmm. funeral um, in April. And then in May this year, what was it again? Um, the King Charles coronation. Oh, the actual coronation it itself. It took yes. place on mm -hmm. Saturday, 6th May. Mm -hmm. Um, at West, Westminster Abbey in London. Uh, Monday, May 8th was a public holiday on Montserrat to mm -hmm. mark the event. And Montserrat official delega delegation went to the UK for that um, event. Her Excellency the Governor, the Honorable Premier, and 10 members from the Royal Montserrat Defence Force. Mm -hmm. um, did we have anyone from the police force? Yes. 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 We had two members from the, the police, police force. Yes. Right. We can give the names a little later. And later, yes. yes. And then, of course, on island, we did a little thing here. I think we had a 21-gun salute um, at the Carsby Gun Battery mm -hmm. um, to mark um, the occasion. So I, I just want to make the point of all the activities that has taken place since last year to now. So we now have the arrival of Her Excellency. And uh, Mr. Tucker is now being escorted to his seat. And Her Excellency um, ABC for today is officer in training, or we say officer cadet, um, um, Carmen, Sita. Carmen Sita Jubri. And she is escorting Her Excellency now to the dais. And we had the fanfare um, be just being played to greet her arrival. Again, just like the arrival of the Honorable Premier, um, when she steps onto the dais this morning, the Union Jack will be unfurled and the first six bars of the national anthem will be played. Um, so that's what you're looking at for those of you who are watching us um, via um, the GIU, whether it be the drone shot or the ground camera <laughs> shot. Um, but for those who are listening on the radio, we will continue to explain. So the armed guard are now up to the shoulder arms, just awaiting the order to present arms and we'll go over to the parade commander. General salute, present arms. Shoulder arms. God, order arms. Mr. Fergus just reminded me of when I used to do that many years ago, and the need to make sure your voice is portrayed. But we go quiet again while he addresses the governor. Good morning. Since you were on. On parade this morning, one unit of the Royal Montserrat Defence Force, one unit of the Royal Montserrat Police Service, combined unit of the Marine Division of the Royal Montserrat Police Service and the Sea Cadets, one unit of the Montserrat Cadet Corps, and one unit of the unarmed of the Montserrat Cadet Corps, Montserrat Fire and Rescue Service, the Montserrat Prison Service, members of the Girl Guide Movement, ma'am, all awaiting your inspection, and they are accompanied by the Royal Antigua and Barbuda Police Force Band. Right, so this is the, great, the, the outlay to um, Her Majesty, the, the, uh, Her Excellency, uh, the Governor. She has accepted the invitation and she has even invited the Honorable Acting Premier to come along with her for the, for the inspection. Now, as I just wanted to, to make the point that that is something that you as Parade Commander um, have to make sure you remember everyone who you have... Um, I, I was just going to say that as well, because, yeah. I mean, you know, he knew... Yes, I, you know, I, I did Captain, that all too well. Yes. So while who, you, who while you all talk about having a big parade and yes. the number of troops, you have to remember that. Of course. Parade commander. Thank you. Yes. So I have my, made my years of that. And I'm sure Major Joseph Lynch could tell you about his well, time. Yes. <laughs> having right. to account for all of that. Major Lynch. Major? Yeah. <laughs> 
disappointed though that um, they seem to have a little lapse. They not seem to remember the secondary school mm-hmm. cadet recruits mm-hmm. for, for, it, for the first time. And of course, they'll be quite exciting yes. to be in the first ceremony of parade. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. Notwithstanding, they're not I mean, allowed to be armed at this point. And yes. time in the training, yes. yes. So, so, the inspection has uh, begun. Her Excellency is inspecting the armed guard Police as service. we speak. And the parade commander, um, we, while he's not, should I say, being, his bike is not being transferred at this time, he's explaining to um, Her Excellency the combination of the units. And of course, if it was someone visiting, the Marine Division and the Sea Cadets. Um, the actual unit and the name of it and, and so on. But it's common knowledge for Her Excellency, <coughs> so he may not need to say too much. Yeah, what, what are some of the questions that, that, that might be asked? Well, most, you know, questions, are, most questions are directed to. Um, uh, a member Army of cadets. the respective unit. And how are you? How long have you been serving? Right. right. And, um, you know, how long did, uh, did you enjoy preparation right. or anything along that line? And, of course, you have been properly briefed to know okay. how to Rear respond rank. to questions from whoever it is that I'm um, um, carrying out the inspection. Inspection, sir, or it is, sir, yes, sir, or no, uh, or ma'am, yes, ma'am, ma'am. No, ma'am. and so yeah. on, that you make sure you... Um, uh, because you are being assessed. Yes. Not necessarily by this person doing the inspection but but by your senior officers uh, there to see how best you represent your respective unit and and, and, and also you know ex-military they're they're looking on and uh, when you get off the parade square they will let you know (laughs) (laughs) Um, you know and uh, to be honest with you if you make a mistake uh, in the early days um someone like major bazi would have said just give me a case of <laughs> just give me a case. Yes, yes. <laughs> Colleagues, let me just pray your indulgence while we go um, silent, while uh, in, they raise the volume of the band. I just want to make the point of the band being, being practicing all local music. The tune they were playing was, was um, Oh Monsoir. Oh, yes, I just wanted to make that point. Um, so if you weren't here or see for yourself, you would know it's the Antigua uh, band because all the music they're playing today, uh, local music, um, I would have heard them practice. Yes, so I think I on, on Thursday yes, we, we yes. had a, a um, and we said we, they had to be practicing those songs <laughs> for yeah, a while, yeah. yeah. And because um, they did a very good job in, in um in representing the music. Yes. So Her Excellency oh. is continuing with the inspection. She's coming up um, in front of the contingent from the um, Fire and Rescue Service and Prison Service. You were saying? I was just saying, Peter, did, <coughs> did you have a hand in making sure they were properly briefed? <laughs> I, I do my part when I'm called upon to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in, 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 and, yes, and not to impose himself. <laughs> no, no. Right. <laughs> yes, yes. But I had to ask the question. I, yeah. <laughs> but but it, it is yes, it is it is it is you know good that we try to promote. I think the issue why we couldn't hear him too well. They had to go back a bit from the microphone. Yes. Um, so that uh, to so facilitate the inspection. Yeah. Um, but um, I can assure you, and you will hear them more as we go along, and the local music that they play. Right, so they have stopped as Her Excellency is now speaking with them and, of course, thanking them for making the journey to Montserrat. It is again uh, uh, regrettable that we were not able to get um, troops, for more troops from Antigua and Senkits. And the Antigua situation is that we do have the ferry service yes. operating. Yes. Yeah. We were hoping to use the Antigua Coast Guard, and they too have operational commitments, so we're unable to bring the, the Our contingent. Our brownies. I want them prepared to come from the Antigua Defence Force. Yeah, but so uh, we were only able to use our boat, the, sham, the Shamrock, to bring the band. Helicopter staff. Yeah, yeah but, yes. as, but as you said, the, the show must continue. Yes, indeed. It, and it has to go on. Yes, it has to go on. But let me make it clear, because I think um, they would have said that in writing, they were looking forward to sending their troops to celebrate the first King's birthday parade. Um, for them as well, too, um, to Montserrat. Because in St. Kitts and Antigua, they don't celebrate, they don't have a military permit for this occasion. So they were happy the to do that, but then operational issues would have taken precedence, and yeah. so be it. Um, and they're still members of the Commonwealth, are they? Yes, yes. And, 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 and are always willing to support Montserrat, Montserrat. Which, which, is, which is very, very important, um, and, and we must not take that for granted. Um, Her Excellency just finished, um, or oh, is still inspecting the, 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 the young ladies on parade today. And the brown, I am so disappointed that we do not have any Boy Scouts or Boys Brigade here. So it is 
quite a lot of young 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 ladies here today it's not and they are well represented it's not only that i mean we used to have the pathfinders yes and, um, okay. so when the parade used to take place on the monday they would be here yeah, we'll be but today being the sabbath um, they don't normally do public parades like that on um, the sabbath, sabbath. On, on the, on the sabbath. Yes, yes. yeah but the, the, the female grouping i'm told is comprised of the saint augustine four monstrous brownies led by miss arita bufang and then the, we also have the lookout um Monsua, look out third Monsua Brownies, normally led by Mrs. Dari, but she's currently off island, so um, Miss Bufong is also in charge of that grouping. Then we have the rainbows, the ones in yes. red, and they are led by Miss um, Carabel uh, Claribel Figaro. Figaro. Yes, yes. And then we have the, the guide, the, the small guide unit you see there. They are from the secondary school. They are the first Monsua um, guide company, and they are normally led by Dr. Tiffany Skerritt, but she's off island on duty. Yes. I think she was uh, attending in Lucia. a CARICOM uh, um, or CDB, uh, CDB yeah, yes. uh, activity. CDB, yes, in Lucia. Yes, so um, they're all under uh, Miss, Miss, um, Miss Buffon, and I think there's someone else stepping in at this time to help with that. And for, for their participation here, we are eternally grateful. Yes, very commendable. Yes. Yes. We also would mention that we have a unit of the fire and rescue service carrying out uh, first aid duties um as you know it's a warm day it's warm yeah, time pretty so, warm. so so someone um you know the heat get the better of someone they, you know they could step in and assist with anything without any disruption to to the parade her excellency would have conducted her inspection of all persons on parade today she's now making her way back to the ds and she will then confirm to the parade commander if she would have found everything in order. Uh, we will now take up, we will now go back over to the parade commander to hear his discourse with Her Excellency. <coughs> All right, it seems as though we, uh, we are able to pick him up at this time, but this is where normally he would um, ask Her Excellency if she would have found everything in order. And then if Her Excellency answers in the affirmative, on his return and all his orders from here on would be referring to the armed persons on parade as the Guard of Honor, meaning that they would have passed the, the relevant inspection of that of the official and they will now be going from here. Okay? He would also ask the Her Excellency permission mm -hmm. to to proceed with the, with the parade. With the rest of the parade, right. And yes, and all the other things that comes along um, with that. So um, he seemed to have gotten the clearance and he is now back and trying to get the troops um, in order. Are we able to hear? Okay, right. So the trooping of the band. Yes, so the next item um, would be uh, the usual trooping of, of the band and we'll see the form that that takes. But in the meantime, yeah, in, in the meantime, we, we wish to talk about uh, King Charles the Third, King Charles the Third, and uh, the person who we are celebrating here today. Okay, tell me um, anything you could tell us to start us off, with King Charles, uh, Major. There's, there's not a lot I can tell about King Charles the Third, so mm -hmm. to speak, mm -hmm. except to say that um, the, the British monarchy has been in. in existence since the eighth century so to speak but um the, the most significant part of the, the british monarchy actually started in 1066 mm -hmm. with the conquest by william william the conqueror and then he was so to speak we take the history of the of the of the british monarchy from that time to this current period of 2022. Mm -hmm. during that period i i think we had something like 20 45 or 44 banana. Mm -hmm. During that period, we had uh, King Charles I, of course. Um, history will tell you exactly what took place with that particular banana. Mm -hmm. And then we had the, um, the Council of State, which overtook the, the, um, the responsibility of, of the banana for, for the period 1649 to 1653. And then we had Oliver Cromwell, Lord Protector, who took the responsibility from 1563 to 1568, and then his son Richard Cromwell 
did it for one year before they, the matter was restored to the royal family. Okay, so we just take a pause for now, and we just want to highlight that the fact that the band is now becoming the truth, um, meaning that they'll be marching past, will march past for excellence in Dublin. They have now formed up, as we say, in, in line, and they are now coming down, and the drum major will give the order to, to the, the band to do their eyes right. Now it is normal for the band to do that first, and then get back to the right to play, while they play for all the other children after to carry out their match points. So if you're watching us in GRU, you will see that excellent formation of the troops coming down, um, uh, preparing to do the eyes right um, for Her Excellency Governor. Yes, so we send that out to the, the Council of um, State that controlled Britain in the position of, of monarchy from 1653 to 1658, and then Oliver Cromwell, Lord Protector. The monarchy was restored to the royal family in 1660 when King Charles II was again restored to the throne. Of the 44, 45 monarchy, six of these were, were queens. And significantly, of the queens, Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth II were the longest reigning monarch in the British history. Okay. Um, um, so now we come to King Charles III. Um, tell me directly about him. Yeah. Yes, well, his, his full name is Charles Philip Arthur George. He ascended to the throne on the 8th of September um, 2022 upon the death of his mother, and we have said that before. The parents were Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, who passed in 2021. He was born on November 14, 1948, and in fact, that's the same date of our com commanding officer, Horatio Hewitt. Okay, it's the same, it's the same. Okay. Yes. commanding officer, yes. 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 His spouse was Camilla. Consort, Queen Consort, and now she's fully clean, married um, in 2005. Before, before that, he was married to the Prince of Wales. So, just that because yes. you would have seen the band come down in quick time, and um, sorry, in slow time, during the eyes, right? And they don't go to the by doing a uh, quick march, and this time they will be doing the, the, the eyes left because they're going back to the UK. Um, so the band would have done their part in March passing in slow time and quick time, similar to what all the, the, the other armed guards will do um, in a short moment. Yes, yes. I'm, just, I'm just finishing it off. Yes. 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 You know, um, mm -hmm. King Charles had five children, mm -hmm. grandchildren. Um, his siblings were um, Prince Andrew, Duke of York, Prince Azan, Prince Royal, and Prince Edward. Earl of Wessex. Okay, thank you very much for the, 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 the captain. But the, for completeness, let us also point out that there are other places around the world that are celebrating the King's um, birthday are probably with us are today. Of course, in the United Kingdom proper, um, which is made up of England, Scotland, Wales, and, 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 and Northern Ireland. And uh, those of us who were watching on television this morning would have seen that big event taking place there um, in London. Then we also have the Crown Dependent um, um, territories, um, which are made up of the Isle of Man, um, the Channel Islands, the Balibic of uh, Jersey and, and, and Guernsey. And then we have the other um, overseas territories, which are Gibraltar, Falkland Islands, British Indian Ocean Islands, St. Helena with um, Tristan Kona and Ascension Island. And then we have in the Caribbean, uh, Bermuda, Cayman Islands, Turks and Caicos, EVI, Anguilla, and, and, and Montserrat. So, um, Activities are definitely taking place in all these overseas territories, but the focus today is on us here on Montserrat. And you're looking, those who are watching us, you're looking at an excellent drone shot of the band now getting back in their position. Um, and now we will focus on the arm guard and then followed by the other auxiliary units um, on parade today as they pay their respects um, to Her Excellency on behalf of. His Majesty the King by doing the march pass. So the parade commander, um, we could try again and see if we could pick him up um, via mic as he prepares the troops and get them in proper alignment in preparation for the march pass. Guard of 
Governor will retire. A vote! Turn! Guard of Honor will form close columns of platoons. Change direction right at the halt. Right! Fall! Forward! And there we have the troops uh, being, uh, should we say, realigned. Um, they now fall up in form, forming close columns of platoons in preparation for the march pass. Guard of honor, dressings by the right, right, yes. as you were. Yep, out, turn. Dressings by the right. Right, yes. Right. So the troops are now making sure that the alignment and the rightful, they're in the rightful places. As you know, this is a precise piece of drill that will take place. The march pass in slow and and quick time. And just to um, indicate that the officer leading the defense force unit today is Lieutenant um, Darian Darrow, and then the officer uh, I think leading the the police um, unit. Is um is it uh, uh, Tyrone Fenton? I think yeah, that's his name. Yes. Um, Tyrone, yes. 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 Tyrone Fenton, and then the officer leading the Marine unit is Inspector Courtney Rodney, and then the officer leading the Killet Corps is uh, Lieutenant um, Kelvin White. R. White. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, it's make that one distinction. One. Yeah, <laughs> yes. and and I I know he was saying to be um I I saw something while we, we, they had the um, rehearsal, mm -hmm. in that his two sons yes. um, are in the cadet corps. Uh, in the cadet yes. corps. And that's a proud moment um, yes. for anyone. Yeah, uh, anyone. In, indeed, uh, to have honor. your two sons um, in, in, in parade. Arms. Right, so the guard have uh, now been aligned. They respect the sergeants and ensure we'll that that is done. We'll march fast in slow then, and quick time right, um, at 15 paces intervals. Slow march. Right, so there we have the troops now um, beginning their, their, um, their march pass, um, going down on the western side of the, of the park to come around on the southern side and then to march past Her Excellency on the eastern side of, of the park. The, the, the band is playing the appropriate music for this slow marching, and uh, this is also a time when if anyone is out of step, it would be obvious. <laughs> yes. um, so everybody try to keep it on. So just to remind you, those who are listening, taking part in this slow march at this time, we have the unit of the Royal Montserrat Defense Force, we have a unit from the Royal Montserrat uh, Police Service. Uh, we have a unit from the Montserrat Police Service, um, should we say, Marine Unit. Mm -hmm. That's a small unit. Yes. With some sea cadets. And then we have the regulars, as we say, of the Cadet Corps. Yeah. There are another group of cadets on parade. Those are what we refer to as the recruits. And they are, will be forming part of the other units. And, um, and, and they are unarmed. Unarmed, yes, unarmed. In, indeed. Okay, so this is where it comes down and, you know, back in my days as, as parade commander um, and so on, you try to make everything um, go right. I don't know if that's ever possible. Tell me. You, know. <laughs> you, you better make it go right because the public, the public knows and yes. the, the clap you get that's right. gets louder when you, when you do it right. Yes. That's true. And that's correct. It's an indication that they're satisfied with your performance. Bounce, yes. 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 Um, yes. You know... I should at this time reflect on the fact that um, we have just a single unit of the Royal Mounts at Defence Force. But then again, there was a time when we had actually two platoons, real platoon, I mean the bigger platoon, when we had 32 persons to the platoon, plus a band of about 20 strong. But now with a population of just 4,500 people, it's um, unreasonable to expect that you would have a large unit. Yes. Because it's difficult to, to recruit people to replace those that we have lost. What I'll, say, what I'll say, however, the role of the Royal Monster Defence Force has not diminished. 
um, where we, as we just talk about the number of activities yeah. that they would have participated in um, just from January last year to now. And of course, the hurricane season coming up and all these other responsibilities there. So there we have the unit of the Montreal Defense Force um, looking immaculate, uh, March passing Her Excellency. And of course, the key thing here at the end of all this is to hear of her approval yes. of, and, um, yes. of, of that as the representative of the reigning monarch at this time. You were saying, Mr. Skepper? I, I changed my mind. I was, I was going to say it earlier, but... Um, okay, <laughs> right. So coming down now, we'll have the unit of the Royal Montreal Police Service, and they are now giving the eyes right. And when they do the eyes right to her excellency, the governor, all persons in uniform standing next to or around the governor are expected to return a salute to the troops yes. um, marching there. So we see the commission of police, and we see the commanding officer, um, Colonel Ryan, um, giving a salute in return. This morning we started off with a nice cool park. Now the sun <laughs> is out in all its glory. Don't, don't, right. mention, don't mention it. Yes, so we just hope that it does not affect <laughs> those on parade too much um, this morning. Okay? Right, um, I think the, we, we would like to bring some of the music from the band, but the mic is a slightly forward because they have to go back a bit because of the. Of the yeah. Yes, we hear the, the mantra tune they're playing. And the armed guard is just about ready to complete their, their march pass. Yes, we have the cadets coming up. Yes. The cadets coming up, they're about to. And then we will have the march pass in quick time, in which all the other. Um, um, persons on parade will Step join. Step Corporal. Oh! Right, so the parade commander um, um, is, of course, um, has, has gone to the side to make sure all the troops go around and everybody um, will be in their rightful uh, places. So the cadet has now passed. They would have given their, their eyes right and they are coming up in the rear. But there's some, there's some, um, some intricacies of all of this because we want to... Do quick time! Quick time! Right, so the parade has now um, transformed from the march pass in slow time to quick time as per the instructions of the parade commander. I'm going back to what I was saying that, um, so we, we know a few days ago that our colleagues from Antigua could not make it. And then we were hoping that St. Kitts were, were able to be here. The plan was for them to arrive just before the parade. And then we got notice yesterday that again, for operational reasons, they were unable to make it. But as we say, the show goes on. And we're here this morning looking immaculate um, on parade. And you will see all the troops, including the, the cadet recruits, the girl guides, the brownies, and the rainbows, all preparing, um, getting their, their steps right as they are marking time to do their part in the march pass this morning. And of course, there's the march pass in the fire as opposed to the um, army the march in the line. Yes, indeed. So, coming down first, now in quick time, we have the Royal Mounts at Defense Force. Uh, the officer, the, as I said, the, the unit commander is, is, is Lieutenant um, Darrow, but his instruction give, is given to the parade to IC and the parade commander themselves um, on, on this occasion. He, he gives the order to eyes right for everyone in front there. I must say they have done well, actually. Ah! Yes, and, and the defense force now uh, would have done their part. And they have now um, do what we call a wheel, and they're coming around to be back in line, back to their rightful place on the baseline, as we call it. And the police unit would have just done their march pass, and they too will follow the defense force um, by doing a wheel, and then, yes, and they come around, and we'll be coming back on the baseline. But the site and all cameras should be focusing now on the young ones. And, and they're now marching in file, actually. They're yes, yes. From, from line to file. Line to file. And the young ones are coming up. Um, as I said, uh, well, should I say the young ones? The, the other un, un, um, the, um, units. Um, so we have the cadet recruits. Um, in front of them is, is, is one officer, cadet one officer, Delblish, who is a police officer by profession. Yes. But he assists with the cadet program. And there they are coming down excellent. 
um, dressed in their training greens um, because they, they don't they don't have to be some ceremonial uniform yet. But not that they are looking excellent here this morning on parade. Oh, we did we did say they have the well trained. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then we have the, the unit from the Mount of Fire and Rescue Service. And they are marching with the unit flag, which they must know um, when passing um, Her Excellency for the purpose of the salute. Then we have this contingent from the Mount of Prison Service. They too are marching with their flag, which they know uh, when they did the eyes right. And the Girl Guide Movement, the flag that governed the Girl Guides Brownies and, and Rainbow Units, and that was known. And so we have them all now um, passing uh, the Her Excellency Governor. For those with the governor who is saluting, I can assure you, it would be a strangest time that they're going to keep their hands up from the time the first three pass to the, the last, the last one. one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, to return the greeting to Her Excellency. It would be a relief. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, 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 I actually look how quickly they drop their hands. Yes. <laughs> It was a relief. Why don't, why don't you march faster than <laughs> get my hands down? <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Right. So they all marching past us here at Country Wood, looking real nice. And as I say, um, the sun is now out. But we just hope that the effects of the sun do not, um, you know, you know, do not in any way. But the sun does not affect them in any way for the rest of the parade. So there we would have passed the, the um, brown blue, the march past, okay, march past. Of, for the parade, and now we will be preparing to get to the formal uh, part of the parade where we pay direct respect to His Majesty the King. I will explain that when, when we get um, to that point. But um, while, we, while we're talking on that, um, let me be here to tell me about some past um, governors of Montreal. Um, we now have um, um, Sarah Tucker. Um, could, could you recall some other names? And because prior to that, the post was more of an administrator. God of honor! Correct, um, yeah, yeah, Ooh, and yeah. before that, they were just commissioners because they, they, you had the governor who was the head of the Leeward Island who resided in Antigua. Antigua. Mm -hmm. And he was represented on the islands by order. commissioners. By yes. commissioners. Right. Right. So the parade commander is now um, um, preparing the, the, the troops, the armed guard, um, for that aspect for formals, formal recognition and formal salute. And he has now asked the troops to open wider. Yeah. That means that, yeah. for safety reasons, for yes. sure, that, um, well, to dress wider, coming back from that march pass, they get back to the respective positions before they start the formal process of the unfurling of the royal stand. Well, he would have given the open order. Yes, so that's the open order. Open and the yes. parade sergeant major is carrying out the dressings um, as we speak, instructing everyone to make sure that, that they're in line and in their rightful places. And so they're now facing and, forward. And I suppose this is important because mm -hmm. of what is going to transpire yes. after. You need yes. space between the, 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 yes. the troops. So Her Excellency the Governor has now um, come down and moved away from the DS, and all God eyes honor. will be on the flagpoles. Shoulder arms! Flying as we speak is the Montreal flag and the Union Jack. Pray! Royal salute! Present arms! And now with the presenting arms, we will hear the national anthem being played and the royal standard will be unfurled and all, all other flags on parade should be lowered.
Right, so back to us here in the commentary booth, just to explain what happened there. So Ooh, the man shot flag was lowered and the Union Jack lowered, and the flag of focus as we speak is the right, royal right. standard. God. And we'll now, after the minutes. formal salute, greeting that un un unfurling, the armed guard will now prepare themselves um, for the feudal war. And to yes. do that, they must first unfix their bayonets, bayonets. and anything that um, and get themselves ready for the purposes of encumbrances. And, and, it, and it also, you know, the unfurling of the royal standard is saying that as if the king God is actually the DS. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, yes. that's why the DS is empty. Take and, uh, you know, we are saluting the flag. Yes. So, for, the, for that activity, the troops will now even get give themselves more space. Load. So they would have um, opened a bit wider and they're now standing in load. Let's hear the parade, Commander. Present! Comments! And there we have the first volley. And the first volley is now followed by the first six bars of the national anthem. So while the troops reload, again, as I said, it's a process. Everyone on, um, is Please expected end. to stand, as I said, as we pay homage Comments. to the monarch. We say pardon the wind in the open mics, but we make every effort to bring you that, that the, the music when the band is playing. Comment. This time the entire national anthem will be played. So uh, we asked you to bear with us as you would have heard the wind in the mic out there, the wind in the mic, but it is, you know, helpful that we bring you the actual music and the actual commands. So the troops will now um, unload and prepare themselves for another part of the parade. And, and coming up is something that those of you who are regular are watching parades and so you will see we do different this year. And that as Officers, it relates to the, the cheering, the post. three cheers to the king. On this occasion, um, the armed guard will do that with their arms grounded. God so you will hear that. We'll and those of you who follow this parade um, would say, but we never heard that, that before. But that is um, how it's done, actually, um, by the, by, um, in the UK. Mm -hmm. And so we decide to um, adopt, it. adopt it here um, in Montserrat, where the armed guard will be asked to... to God of honor. Shun! Guard of honor. Ground. Arms. Guard of honor. That's what I'm saying, yes. Uh, we did it before in my time. We, we ground arms before we give it cheers. Oh, okay, right. Excellent. Excellent. Right. Hey. So uh, it's something I that's been here. actually the article we'll discontinued, but that's mm -hmm. how it was done in my time. Okay, good. And I started. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's, that's the way it's done here now. Headdress. Shun. Three cheers for His Majesty the King. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. Prepare to replace 
Headdress. Replace. Dress. Right, and there we have the parade commander. I'm um, giving the instructions, the formal instructions for all those in parade to remove the headdress Shang. and raise them um, um, as part of the salutation to um, His Honor. Majesty the King for the, during the three cheers. Pick up. So ah. the troops will now uh, um, recover their arms or pick up their arms, I should say, and um, coming out God of that of process. And Shang. again, it is it is a sight to see. Um, all the armed guard and parade doing yes. it in unison. Yes. And of course, the cheers was done by everybody on parade, those who are able to remove the headdress for that purpose. We'll advance so in review order. So now we're going to move on to the advance in review by order. By the center. Quick march. And one of the useful things about this activity, it gives the, the young ones a chance to stretch their legs. Yes, yes, yes. Shoulder, arms. Paid, royal salute. Present, arms. Okay, so I would have mentioned throughout this whole process, everybody here in the parade, uh, at the activity was standing. And here we have now the national anthem being played for the lowering of the royal standard. And when that is done, all the other flags will then be unfurled. So, yes, so as we see, the entire hey, um, national anthem was played, the royal standard arms. has been lowered, and the Montserrat flag and the Union Jack have now been unfurled. So, HE will now take up the position arms. as we now move to the next part of the parade, which hey, is the awarding of, of, of medals. Um, I, I'm told there's an adjustment stand. to what we have, so we will wait <laughs> for the rightful person who will be reading the citation. Um, we will mic that person will be mic'd, so we'll hear what they say and then we will comment. Um, um, yes, after. Yes, so uh, this is a grand occasion for everyone who's receiving an award today. Yes. It is a good thing that you know you could actually get your award um, in, the place, in front of everyone. In class. Yes. So let's hear the mic. Sergeant Dixon Semper joined the Royal Montserrat Defense Force on 13th February 2001 from the ranks of the Munstrat Secondary School Cadet Corps. He was awarded the Efficiency Medal in 2012 for having completed 12 years of quality service through both organizations. He was awarded the first class having completed a further six years of efficient service and awarded in 2019 for a total of 18 years service. Now, having completed a further six years of service in the RMDF on the 1st of April, 2023, Sergeant Deberson Semper has completed a total of 24 years and is therefore awarded the second class to the medal. Yes, so there we see Sergeant uh, Deverson Semper um, going forward to receive his, 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 um, his clasp um, added to his medal. Um, and again, as I say, it's, it's a fine moment. You hope that photos are be taken so that you could have one to frame for yourself. Um, yes, and crucial, remember that participation or being a member of the Royal Montserrat Defence Force is a volunteer. Your work is volunteer work. So, you know, getting some form of national recognition for your 24 years of service, it is um, definitely encouraging. Yes. Right? And this must always, this point must always be made, um, that service in our um, defense force at this time is still um, voluntary. Voluntary. voluntary mm -hmm. Right? So it is important, and this is what encourages others to serve, 
that when they would have done their time of distinguished service, service that they would receive some form of recognition. Second yeah. class to the Colonial Long Service Medal. Sergeant Steve Rodney, retired, is hereby awarded a second class to the Colonial Long Service Medal for completing 30 years of service to the Royal Montserrat Police Service. Right, so I don't think that person is on No, it's not, not, here, not on island, But it's yeah. important that that be read. So I, think, I think his brother, oh, um, right. Inspector Rodney. We'll, we'll, we'll collect it for, for him, which is, which is a good gesture. Yes. Because we know he, he would have um, retired and, yeah. and is not an island. So that's justification um, why it should be read yes. and, and, and be announced on his behalf. And somebody yeah. collect it on his yeah. behalf. That is really useful. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. So we continue. First with class to the Colonial Long Service Medal. Police Constable and IBSU Officer Osdell Johnson joined the Royal Montserrat Police Service June 15th and in order to serve her with pride and dignity. Officer Johnson received training in constable development, community policing, and investigations. She works in various departments and currently is attached to the Immigration Department as a supervisor. She acted as sergeant on several occasions. Ms. Johnson is known for her immaculate deportment and friendliness. She is not so a Calypsonian with her well-known hit, Dark Horse in the Race. Police Constable and IBSU Officer Osdell Johnson has completed a total of 25 years of qualifying service on 15th June 2023 in the Royal Montserrat Police Service and is hereby awarded the first class to the Colonial Long Medal, Long Service Medal. And there we see, um, yes, um, Ms. Johnson, Ms. Johnson um, in, dressed in her immigration IBSU uniform, um, on, um, in person, going to receive her, her award. Now again, I, I, I wish to highlight this. It, it's, in, it's, it's a very good thing for persons to be recognized yeah. for the years of, of dedicated service yeah. um, because the key word is qualifying. That's right. right. And qualifying involves that you would have shown some form of dedication, yes. commitment um, to your work. And she would have gone 25 years just two days ago. They said the 15th. I think that's what they announced. Yes. 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 So, uh, yeah. quite indeed. Normally, if let's say it was tomorrow, you'd have to wait till next year to get it. <laughs> <laughs> is that so? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. my. You cannot get it before the qualifying time. Oh, okay, passed. okay. Um, uh, you only could get it um, on that day or after. Or after. Yeah, okay. so she get it Inspector two days. Inspector Courtney yeah. Rodney mm -hmm. joined the Royal Montserrat Police Service on June 15, 1998. He has served his community for more than 25 unbroken years. He has acted in the capacity of superintendent on numerous occasions. He currently holds the position of designated person ashore within the Marine Unit. He has supervised most of the departments within the organization during his tenure. Inspector Rodney is a graduate of the FBI National Academy in Quantico with studies in behavior science. He is a silver and tactical commander as well as a post-incident manager. He has a CIPD certificate in HR administration, court prosecutor, and high court mediator, just to name a few. Inspector Rodney was a former national football player for Montserrat 
and he equally enjoys a good game of cricket. In his spare time, he enjoys spending time with his family. He was awarded the Colonial Long Service Medal for completing 18 years of qualifying service in 2016. Inspector Courtney Rodney has completed a total of 25 years of qualifying service on 15th June 2023 in the Royal Montserrat Police Service and is hereby awarded the first class to the Colonial Long Service Medal. Right, so there we have Inspector Rodney, the brother of the, the other Rodney that we mentioned before. And yes. he too is celebrating um, um, the 15th of, of June, as I was explaining yes. to you, yes, uh, which is two days ago. He's getting his class um, to his long service medal. Again, I, I, I you know, wish to reiterate um, that every opportunity we get a chance to reward or recognize persons for their service, we must do that in whatever form. Okay? So, um, Inspector he, he, Acting Sharandi Tyrone Fenton joined the Royal Montserrat Police Service on 1st January 2005. He's, he has completed 18 and a half years of unbroken service to the people of Montserrat. He is well-rounded as he has completed stints in key areas such as Criminal Investigation Department, Beat and Patrol, and Traffic. He was promoted to the rank of Sergeant in 2013, where he has gained a plethora of experience. His academic accomplishments include being a graduate of the National FBI Academy, where he was awarded a Certificate in Leadership and Criminal Justice. He is an experienced prosecutor who is well respected by the courts. Additionally, he was trained in and is proficient in dealing with major investigations, having completed junior and advanced criminal <coughs> investigation. He, cu he currently holds the rank of acting inspector of police. He has completed a total of 18 years of qualifying service on 1st January 2023 in the Royal Montserrat Police Service and is hereby awarded the Colonial Long Service Medal. And here we have the inspector. Uh, that's the inspector in charge of the, um, the um, police unit. Um, he's a common, um, uh, should I say, um, a participant in the drive time program yes because i think he's the inspector in in also in charge of the the okay. traffic unit um of the royal montsuan uh, police service again you would have heard the citation and about his dedicated um service um in this organization and he has now received his award from her excellency the governor first class to the colonial long service medal fire officer juliana brand was enlisted to the Montserrat Fire and Rescue Service on the 15th of October, 1997. She was promoted to fire officer on the 14th of September, 2009. She has also acted as deputy fire chief on numerous occasions. Ms. Brand is currently responsible for our internal HR department and maintenance of all fire hydrants. She has successfully completed a level three firefighting training in Trinidad and Tobago, a junior leadership training in St. Lucia, and advanced firefighting by Hampshire Fire and Rescue Services in the UK. She was awarded the Colonial Long Service Medal for completing 18 years of service of qualifying service in 2016. Fire Officer Juliana Brand has completed a total of 25 years of qualifying service on 15th October, 2022 in the Montserrat Fire and Rescue Service and is hereby awarded the first class 
to the Colonial Long Service Medal. Again, yes, we see, um, yeah, we, we see, we, we see the recognition um, now being extended to members of the Fire and Rescue uh, Service. Um, Ms. Brand um, is, uh, would have served, as, as you would have heard from the citation, and of course, it's been uh, deemed to be um, dedicated and proficient service, so she is uh, daily awarded. She is now approaching Her Excellency uh, to receive her award. And, and, and again, um, while, you know, we could add to the length of the parade, it is, you know, no better occasion that these actual citations uh, are, are read. And hopefully that they'll be published somewhere um, so that persons can, can look at them because it serves as a form West of encouragement was enlisted and into the Montserrat Fire and Rescue, Rescue Service yeah. on the 1st of August, 1997. She has received training to include junior leadership training in Dominica and advanced firefighting by Hampshire Fire Service in the UK. She was awarded the Colonial Long Service Medal for completing 18 years of service in 2016. Firefighter Stivia West has completed a total of 25 years of qualifying service on 1st August 2022 in the Montserrat Fire and Rescue Service and is hereby awarded the first class to the Colonial Long Service Medal. All right, so coming from the side, yes, so that's uh, Miss West, who would have served 25 years in the Montserrat Fire and Rescue Service, another one being awarded for, for this, uh, this form of service. As I said, you know, it's, it's very good that we have, I just want to reiterate the point, you know, the prison service, the fire service, police service, and the Montserrat Defense Force. And of course, we need to also, or we hope that in the future, that there will be forms of award given to nurses and other persons yes. of that type of, of, of service um, going forward. I know there was a discussion on that to include such awards in, in the National Award Firefighter Jermaine um, Riley program. Mm -hmm. was enlisted was on 1st yes. May 1998. Mm -hmm. Firefighter Riley successfully completed training in advanced firefighting in the Hampshire Fire Service based in the UK. He has also completed training in hose repairs and maintenance in the Trinidad and Tobago Fire College. Mr. Riley was nominated for the National Duty Awards in 2023 by the Montserrat Civil Service Awards. He was awarded the Colonial Long Service Medal for completing 18 years of qualifying service in 2016. Firefighter Jermaine Riley has completed a total of 25 years of qualifying service on 1st May 2023 in the Montserrat Fire and Rescue Service and is hereby awarded the first clasp to the Colonial Long Service Medal. Uh, yes, and then we have um, Fire Officer Riley um, coming on to um, collect um, his award. Um, good representation here from the fire service today in terms of the number of persons uh, being awarded for the years of, of, of service. Um, you, you would have heard from the list, I think there was only one from the defense force. This year. Normally it's the other way around. Yeah. You, you, you know, we have more persons, but based on years of service and timings, and that's how it fire is. Fire officer um, Sheldon White mm -hmm. was enlisted on the 15th of September, 2004. He was promoted to fire officer on 1st July, 2014. He also acted as deputy fire chief on one occasion. Mr. White currently manages a shift at the Braid Station and, res and is responsible for the Montserrat Fire and Rescue Service vehicles as the preventative maintenance officer. He successfully completed training 
in advanced firefighting in the Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service, crew commander and trainer, trainer of trainers in aerodrome firefighting in the UK. He is also a trainer of trainers as a first aid instructor with the British Red Cross. Fire officer Sheldon White has completed a total of 18 years of qualifying service on 15th September 2022 in the Montserrat Fire and Rescue Service and is hereby awarded the Colonial Long Service Medal. Okay, I'm just looking to see if that person... Okay, no, right. May not be here. But maybe Antutia has to be speaking. Hey. Right, so Her Excellency is now moving back Shine. to the dais. And we're now getting ready <coughs> for the closing of... For the, yeah, um, closing activities here today. So the prayer is now being brought to attention and um, to make sure that everybody General. is in tune and uh, all in their rightful places. Um. The... the Right. So, yes. So, uh, the parade, the armed guard has been brought to attention. And, yes. And the, her Excellency Governor is on the dais. And the final um, salute is given to her. Um, the flag has been flown at this time. As I said, it's the Union Jack and the Montserrat flag. And after she would have received the salute, final salute, she would leave and then um, the acting premier. Is that so, Peter? Yes, yeah, yes. The, the, and then the acting the, premier the, the, would the, leave, yes. Would, would, so would. we would just, yes. So Her Excellency is now going on the parade square to say some words to um, the parade commander and pretty much um, express her gratitude and thanks for the service and then... Um, the, the, then um, she would leave, and then we'll have a situation where the the uh, acting, premier. acting premier will will pretty much do the same. Yes. Yeah, so the, the, the parade is um, going on, and we do have some persons who, um, what should I say, uh, uh, the sun is getting the better of them <laughs> at, at this time. Yes. Um, but I, I just want to make the point clear how how hot it is. It has been for the last few yes. days, and uh, sometimes when you've been pick up, you know. We expect it to continue and then it, it would follow. Yeah, so there yeah, we go. Yeah, we, 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 we hardly mention it. Mm. But notwithstanding, the parade commander yeah. um, takes care of the parade. We never mention the marshal of the parade, which is Lieutenant Colonel Alvin Ryan. Yes, yes, and yes. all of this plan must have been sanctioned by him. Indeed. Uh, indeed. Uh, yes. He, he is the actually the marshal of the parade. Of the parade. And for all ceremonial and military occasions, um, on Montserrat, the Monsuat. commanding officer of the Montserrat Defense Force, yes. um, um, is marshal. So when it goes wrong, that's the person who would hear who? about it first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so yes. Excellency is just greeting the officials under the tent, um, thanking them for attending. And then she will then go to her vehicle. And then, um, as we mentioned, the, the, the acting premier will take up his rightful place. So the flag is still flying, the Union Jack, and it will come down when Her Excellency the vehicle leaves. Um, Leave, and, leaving the Montreal flag. Uh, right, and then that too will come down when the acting, acting premier leaves. Yeah. So, but, but while we're on that, um, and, and the issue of, of, the, of the military parade and the responsibility of the, of the commanding officer of the Royal Montreal Defense Force, let's go back to the Montreal Defense. T t tell me about some past um, uh, persons who have been, who have served as, as commanding officer of, of, of the Royal Montserrat Defence Force. Um, I, I know two of you are here with me, but I, but, but, but well, we probably we probably should start from yes, the, early, yes. the early years. Mm -hmm. and I think left um, lieutenant pension, mm -hmm. and um, I think somewhere I have the the dates. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm not too worried about but, the dates. But, but if you just give us the and names, yeah. mm -hmm. lieutenant Maloney. Mm -hmm. Then we had a captain Grell. Now mm -hmm. it's, it's um, worthwhile to note that. Um, during those periods, the, the head of defense also was actually the commissioner of police who was stationed in Antigua. Mm -hmm. So these people were really OCs, officers, officers in charge. Yes, charge. Yes, not yes, really yes, commanding yes. officers. Mm -hmm. um, the then we have commanding officer probably Captain Grell. Okay. Of course, Captain Grell served in World War II. So when they were 
disbanded, they, they, they were also retired at a rank mm. above what they, they left it. In other words, he was Lieutenant Grell, but he, he left the, the army as Captain Grell. Right. right. And yes. the same thing happened to mm -hmm. Captain Eric, mm -hmm. Eric um, Kelsey. Right. Right. So, so we're going up the, up, up yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 the next um, up. person we mm -hmm. had was a local person, and he was the commanding officer. He was actually first commanding officer of the mm -hmm. Manchester Defence Force. He didn't have to report <coughs> to, mm -hmm. to the um, Commissioner of Police in Antigua. Mm -hmm. and, um, that was who? That was Cyril Taylor? Cyril Taylor. Taylor right. And mm -hmm. Captain Cyril Taylor, not as captain, but he was actually studying in the United Kingdom during Queen Elizabeth's coronation. So mm -hmm. he actually represented Manchester on that coronation period. So mm -hmm. youngster, we went to the Rialto Theatre to see Captain Taylor marching past right. during the coronation hey. of Elizabeth II. Okay. All right. So let us pause a moment. Uh, what while, about let's, let's, let's pause a moment while we have the acting premier um, now going on the DS um, to be to receive his departing salute. Over to the parade command. Hey, general, present arms. Yes, and there we have the band playing, as I said, a well-known territorial, the territorial song, um, in recognition of the, the honourable uh, premier, uh, acting premier. I need to get it back. No, it's, it's yeah. yes. You so, got it right at the end. <laughs> all right. So we continue with the defence force personnel. Yes, but didn't we leave out someone, um, Edgar Berridge, Captain Edgar Berridge? Did he serve as actually commanding officer? He, he was a, he was a Berridge, but I don't think he had that appointment ah, from okay, the official okay, documents okay, okay. and that were researched. Yeah. So we were being up from Cyril Taylor up yeah, to House Yeah, Captain Taylor, okay. and then he served during the time up to 1960, thereabout, mm -hmm. I think. And he was the first commanding officer of the Manchester Defence Force, right. so to speak. And then you have Captain Jackie, you have Jackie, that is Captain Jackie Seymour House, mm -hmm. right. who took Start over that. when Captain hey. Taylor retired. Mm -hmm. And then Major Vincent Brown, mm -hmm. he became the first major of the Manchester Defence Force because at that time, as we, we argued, we weren't really a company as such before, but because we had two platoons plus a band of 20 strong. We argued that that could be um, construed as a company, so they agreed, and he was the first major of the Manchester Defence Force. Mm -hmm. When he took up um, service at the University of the West Indies, Captain W. Obazi became the commanding officer of, of the, the force, mm -hmm. and he was there for quite a number of years, followed by Major Theodore Theophilus Bramble, I notice you all have left out his middle name. <laughs> <laughs> but he's actually T.T. Bramble, Theodore Theophilus Bramble. He's not going to complain. <laughs> not in a position at this point. <laughs> then um, myself took over as commanding officer in 2003, 2004, someplace around that. Sorry, 19. 1993, I wasn't promoted to major until I would have completed the company commander's course and mm -hmm. that was on the recommendation of the British Defence Advisor at the time. So I had mm -hmm. to commit complete the company commander's course. course before I was promoted to Mm -hmm. Major. Position of major. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, I was promoted on the 17th of, of June okay. to major, mm -hmm. 1995, and the volcano started on the 17th of July. One month after? 
one month after okay. <laughs> to test my training. Yes. And here we are. And here we are. Here we are on the seventeenth of June, twenty twenty three, talking about it. Yes. Okay. So we just this the, the, the formal departure of the acting premier. And the motorcade is now leaving, so the Montserrat flag ha has now been lowered. Been lowered. Mm -hmm. So it's back over to the, well, the parade commander now will, will deal with matters here in terms of getting the troops together uh, for the march off right. and through the village of Salem back to the Salem police station um, um, for refreshment and otherwise. But continue with, with the matter of the... Yes, on my retirement in 1997, um, the force was commanded by General Captain Sloop. Drewby, promoted to Major Michael Drewby. Mm -hmm. After ah. some mishap, mm -hmm. he too um, retired or resigned. Captain John Skerritt pulled the force for a while. So describe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, after going um, overseas for studies, the force was under the command of Captain. A German, for a period of time. Yes, German. Yes, he was brought back, we should say, yes. to serve. Yeah. No, um, it was under me until I retired, and then. Hey, in 2001. That's what he said. Yeah. Yes, yeah. in 2001. Yeah, so, and um, after that, we had um, Captain Horatio Quilton Trick mm -hmm. for a period of time. Mm -hmm. okay. um, then we had Major, now Colonel. Then Major, Major now mm -hmm. Colonel. Yeah, Elvin Ryan from um, 2014 um, after the passing of, 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 of Captain Trick. Captain 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 right. Captain Right, 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 and 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 um, Colonel Ryan is still uh, serving um, as such. So we just saw um, the parade commander gave the commissioner and the commanding officer of the defense force a salute, and so they would have now um, left the formal parade square. The parade commander is now preparing to hand over to the appropriate person who will take the troops, um, um, prepare the troops for the march off. It's, it's been true to form. It, it was publicized to be between a one hour and one hour and 20 minutes. And I think from my clock, from the formal start, it, it, yes, one hour <laughs> and 20 minutes. Um, and of course, you have to do primary the citation. Yes. Uh, and the reading of the citation. I, 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 yes. yes, I just want you to know that my watch keeps its own time. Yeah. So it's about 22 minutes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. Yeah. 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 In time. Yeah, right. So yeah. let, me, let me make it clear. It was 20 minutes when the premier left. <laughs> yes. Anything after that now is different. <laughs> so I go back to that point. It was one hour and 20 uh, minutes. As per the, the plan. And uh, yes. I, I wish to and, compliment and, at this time Captain, um, Captain Foster. Um, he's the serving adjutant yes. of the Royal Montserrat Defence Force. He deals with all administrative and financial matters. And I know he's the one who worked in dealing with all the logistics um, of, for this matter, um, um, summon all the relevant meetings and get the rightful, um, what should I say, um, persons being so assigned to assist working with the office of the Deputy Governor, working with the Governor's office, and of course with the overseas contingents yes. that we were expecting to come and um, to get this going. I must compliment him because I know of that myself, seeing um, him at work in, in dealing with that. So I could attest to that of his hard work and dedication on behalf of the commanding officer. Right? We, we also have the flag orderlies. I just wanted to mention the three flag orderlies, female acting female sergeants from the from the RMPS. Month, RMPS. Um, I'm just trying to see if I could um, uh, get their correct names. But I know Sergeant Maxine. Um, Maxine is um, one of them, and then we also had um, Sergeant Allen. Um, just trying to get the first name. Um, yes, I think there should be from here. But, yeah, Maxine yeah. Lee, uh -huh. Sergeant Laurel Allen, and Sergeant Jacqueline Campbell. Yeah. Um, they operated on the flags today, and have, of course conducted their, their duties well. Now. Um, we see the troops, everyone, and, and you knowing the kids, sometimes we don't have the best intentions. You try to tell them there is no need for them to go on the road. Excited. Uh, that is what they look yeah. forward to. The so they're free to you. do that. Been a, <laughs> you. Uh, yeah, so the troops are marching off, and as you could see from the cameras, uh, they're showing you the crowds around and the troops as they march off, um, off, off the field. The, the intent, um, normally, wherever we have this parade, we try and go through the village to. to, to so that the residents can see the troops marching. So I think the intent is to go up Salem Road today, go across the main road, and then down to the police station right. for the formal dismissal. Um, we'll see, especially the young ones at the back, 
if they can keep up with that. But I know you, you know where's any effort trying to stop them. Yeah. <laughs> no, at this time. But that's the excitement for them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Music yes. that become easy task. Yes. 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 So those who are watching us on YouTube, uh, you'll see the overhead cameras showing you the troops that are coming out of the park and they are going up um, the Salem Road, and you'll see the overhead um, drone footage. We, we are putting technology to work. Of here course, of and, course. Uh, so uh, be it. And 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 um, you know, trying to show you as much of, of, of what is going on. Uh, and and um, so I, I want to come back to the matter of, of the of the police service. Um, and, and, and trying to see if I could, if you could, uh, if I could plug on you guys' um, um, memory to to tell me about you know, let's say from a commissioners of police or anything um, like that. Um, um, you know, based on, on your yeah, Captain Scary, you go help me out here, please. Yes, well, we started with um, Vanderpool. I don't know his first name. Yes, yeah, so that would have been when the Montreal Police Service was police force was formed um, from the, what was the Leeward yeah. Islands Police Service. So that would have been 1966 or 67 or the about. Beautiful. But we're not going to get to two years. Yes, the first person then, then was Harold Bissett. Bissett, right? Then we had Car Carlton St. John. I think mm. he was a Guyanese. Okay. Yes. Mm. Um, you had Commissioner Francis. I don't know his first name. Right. Mm. Um, then we had uh, Mr. Thomas Richards. Mm -hmm. Then you had Sidney Charles. Mm -hmm. Then we had David Crowther. Yeah. Then we had Frank Cooper. Barry Young, Christopher Burgess, um, then we had Alex Hel Elder, Elder, and John B. Douglas, and then we have um, Steve Foster. Now we have Dr. Nicholas Cavani uh, um, as the interim, interim commissioner. commissioner. Okay, commissioner. right, right. Yes. And, 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 and well, while we're on that, um, the interim commissioner, um, I had a chance to interview myself, and, and, and I get to find out, you know, he is... Um, in the police um, service for, for, for over 23 years, um, you know, across a range of, 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 of disciplines uh, within the police. Um, he is on second men to Montserrat from Hertfordshire uh, Constabulary. And that, 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 for example, is, is a very large um, service um, yes. in the United Kingdom um, um, with over 4,000 <laughs> officers um, based on what I see from him, um, his work. He, he, he has a PhD. Um, and uh, specialize in police leadership management and organizational and um, organizational and psychological matters. Right? So, yes, and, he, interesting and, he, and he would have served in several places. Right. I mean. That's an interesting um, um, topic right. to study. And, and, and while I'm on that, while I'm on that, let, let's talk about the, the most the next senior post we saw around, which would have been um, Superintendent Williams. Um, he served today as the ADC to the to, to the Premier. Um, um, anything you would have done from your, from your research on him? Uh, well, it, he um, was promoted to the rank of inspector in 2011. Mm -hmm. Williams is a Vincentian by birth, but has been in Montreal for many years. In fact, you can classify him now as a Montreal. Mm -hmm. um, inspector Williams currently is oh, in charge of... Well, not inspector, he's no superintendent. Superintendent, yeah. sorry, mm -hmm. is in charge of... the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal and the Queen's Platinum Jubilee Medal and uh, the Colonial, I think he has the Colonial yeah, he has the Colonial, yes. long service medal mm -hmm. and the class for over 25 years of service, so he has done his duty yeah. and I'm glad to see that he he represented us well today um, you know some, we take the ADC role for granted and we keep on saying the ADC which is aid de camp yes. and you know, mm -hmm. um, that person is responsible for ensuring that the people who they are helping yes. or assisting, yes. that they don't put a foot wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. they, they, they have to learn the parade, they have to understand what the person must do and help them to perform on, on, on parade. But if, if you're looking at the video as we speak, you, you could see that the, um, the troops are now going along the Salem Main Road. They would have turned the corner um, up by Miss Lorita's shop. Um, going up that hill there, and um, going on the Salem Main Road, and making their way to towards the the police station. Our mandate is to try and keep you informed until the troops would have reached the the, the, the police station. But let's now talk and, and, about. And, and, and I must mm -hmm. add that mm -hmm. the the guides and so forth, and the, 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 they are keeping abreast. They, okay. they they are not falling back at all. Yes, and and I think it is a, a opportune time for us to pay homage. 
to, the, the, to Miss, uh, Mistress Amelda Winspear, who served as guide commissioner for a considerable amount of time, um, you know, when she was up and about, and, and, and with Miss Geraldine Mason as well, who would have retired a number of years ago, but still you could see her in person here today um, giving support and guidance to the, 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 the units of the, of the young girl. James? Oh, yeah, she, yeah. Has, mm -hmm. she is committed. She has been loyal to this organization for mm -hmm. years. Yes. You know, yeah. yes, yes. And, and, and mm -hmm. once she's up and about, she will do everything in her power to, to, yeah. to make sure that, um, you know, that they, they perform properly, they're in the rightful places, and give the leaders, the new leaders, yeah. guidance as to how And she will be at themselves. every function if you, yeah. if you give her yeah. a chance yeah. and if she's around. Yeah, I was I was reminded of um, Amelda's um, service, mm -hmm. you know, through through a WhatsApp message. Oh right, and, yes. and said, listen, look, you must say something about mm -hmm. Amelda and her oh. dedication mm -hmm. for all these years as commissioner of the Girl Guide Movement. Yes, yes, we have to, we, we, you know, and uh, sometimes we have to take time out to pay homage to that's those right. persons because volunteering is not an easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. And, and I think that's one of the issues we are suffering from now um, because of some of the, the responsibilities that uh, volunteers are now being called upon to do. Uh, apart from just leading a unit, you know, have to give account for things. You got to be responsible for this, and even with local legislation and so on nowadays, you know, especially to if, if you have a bank account, to make sure that there's proper management and that returns are filed. So it's it's one of those challenges uh, to get people to come uh, forward to and, volunteer. And, and, and definitely, that is difficult, especially when in a year you're only co collecting a thousand dollars. Yes. yes. So yes, you yes, know, yes. Um, mm -hmm. that's something that needs to be. Uh, May, there must be some. Yeah, major de some de develop that a little but, bit more. Mm -hmm. the, the, the the volunteerism part, you know. What what it, what what it takes. Um, you it know. takes um, first of all commitment and dedication to the particular organization which you decide to give your service. You know, mm -hmm. um, that's one of the problems we have. People have started with a lot of enthusiasm and um, over time it wanes and, mm -hmm. and the, the organization suffers. You have seen organizations die as a result of people showing a lot of enthusiasm earlier on and then it falls off and um, as a result of which I don't know if it's a monster problem, but we don't seem to be able to, to push ourselves forward. You find the, 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 other, the other Caribbean islands, you'll find them stepping forward to be in position of, of leadership and so on, but right. not in our, our case. Mm -hmm. If you're elected to a position, a volunteer position in Mansart, you'll actually die there. They, they'll, what you call, amend the constitution mm -hmm. over and over to make sure that that person stays <laughs> there because you know, they don't mind being in <laughs> in the organization, but they don't want the responsibility Ability of taking on leadership and leadership, things like that. Yes, right? and, yes, yes, and, and I think that is, what, courage. that is what hits uh, the, the young boys organization yeah. hard. In this the case, boys you don't have and, the boys brigade, the, the, the boys scouts, boys and, scouts. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think, you know, um, you know, we'll say what we can say, we'll try and lobby who we need to lobby to try and get them here because the young ladies, young girls have been well represented yes. here today. Maybe we would have seen some boys if we had the pathfinders for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but as we explained, um, they would only participate in parades on, on another day. Um, but today is the Sabbath and the commitment would be, of, of course, to attend. But we've been... But, we've but, been but, but, we've but you see, go ahead, go ahead, Captain. You see, volunteering too, you need encouragement. Huh? Mm -hmm. And sometimes from the level of the public, from the administrators and so forth, it makes it extremely difficult for volunteers. You know, you have to appreciate them. And that's what, why we were saying you have to honor people like um, Emelda, um, Geraldine, and yes. so forth. Yes. Mm -hmm. But not uh, um, later in life. All the time, you have to tell them and encourage, and encourage them. them. And, yes. and, so yes. and, so and, and that's why, again, I highlight the point that we do have those medal awards for things like the Defense Force mm -hmm. and so on. We need to extend it as part of our national award system to go guide leadership in those organizations. And I, I did also mention people like nursing who work shift and so on. And, 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 and that sort of profession, uniformed organizations like those, to, to con encourage them to continue to serve. It's yeah. not easy. Doing a job is one thing, but sometimes having to work the shift or, or the overnight and lose a night's sleep and so on. Similarly, to give up your time personally for transporting yourself and feeding yourself and taking you the time and dedication to run a, a, a volunteer organization in the Montreal Club. Yeah, I also want, also want to speak on the point that Major made, that in Montreal you don't have a lot of people coming forward in yes. leadership mm -hmm. positions. It is true that in other countries, 
you have a lot of pe um, people coming forward. Mm -hmm. But even so, the numbers are uh, waning, no matter, no matter what. And, and, but in those countries, they have a larger population, and there are wider number of people who are willing to come forward and help. Yes. Okay, so those of us who are uh, listening on the radio, I'll be, be providing, um, as I said, basic um, commentary um, while those, uh, the parade is still on the road making its way to the Salem police station. Those who are watching us on the GIO YouTube um, site or the Government of Montserrat Facebook site, you're watching, what you're seeing is the live coverage by drone of the parade uh, making its way down to the police station. Here in the commentary booth, we will now go around and try and get some final words from, from, from our commentators. Let us begin with my good colleague, John, retired Captain John Richard Shervington Skerry, <laughs> commander of the British You Empire. know, I will, I will tell you something. Yes. I was expecting you to call the major first. Yes. No, no, no. I will tell you why I want the major no, no, first, no. because all I had to say, uh -huh. I concur. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Yes. Oh, okay. So you wanted to do it by order of rank. Okay. If you say you can't call, say, well, I'm satisfied. He was well trained. And what he says is going to reflect the training that he has received from me. Yes. But, but, but I just want to say that I'm pleased with the performance of the troops mm -hmm. um, today. I want to also say I'm a little disappointed with the numbers mm -hmm. in the in the parade, but mm -hmm. you know we have gone through a volcanic crisis. Uh, you know, we and, and we, COVID, we, we, crisis, yeah. COVID crisis, and we talk about a little bit of leadership and mm -hmm. so forth. You know, um, and, 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 and you know we, you have to always encourage the parents to get the children out mm -hmm. and to show an interest. Yes, because if you're you're looking to um, volunteers alone. It is very difficult to yeah. control children, especially when it comes to the guides and, mm -hmm. and, and, and so forth. Everybody, it's a community and everybody has to play a, a part in it. In terms of the defense force, um, I say, you know, things are changing. Yeah. And I am saying that you have to look at what you're doing now and find ways of encouraging people to come. Innovative in. And ways. I'll tell you something, because you have moved to a civil role, mm -hmm you have to build skills in mm -hmm. there. Yes. And I'm talking about those who fund mm -hmm. things like the Defense Force. Yes. Sometimes you have to make sure that the members have the skills that you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even you have to pay a little money to send them yes. for an apprenticeship yes. Yes. or something. Yes. Some it attachment is of sorts. So that mm -hmm. when you embody in a crisis, mm -hmm. you have people in there you could call on mm -hmm. for the skills. Uh, uh, before I call on Major, I just remember there's a good friend of mine um, a, a former commanding officer in the name of, of Major Joseph Gabriel Lynch, who used to say in peace times, um, the, the force was seen like a menace. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 and a train. And a train. Until when something happened, yeah. we, take, we take command. Yes. That, that is I, I yield to you, Major, to clarify that. That, is, that is correct. Um, mm -hmm. Numbers is a great thing to have because it reduces the, the level of um, stress mm -hmm. on certain people. But if you have a small unit that is well trained and dedicated, that mm -hmm. can assure you they can do much more than have a whole bunch of rubber, as, as I normally say. And like I've tried to encourage those people who serve with me, in wartime, <coughs> an, an emergency soldiers are looked upon as heroes. Mm -hmm. During the time of peace and tranquility, they are right. looked upon as parasites. parasites. <laughs> and therefore, that is why it is difficult sometimes to get people to join, these, to join and stay in these organizations. Mm -hmm. Okay, at the, at the height of the um, volcanic crisis, we are looked upon as heroes. You know, we have got so much favorable um, commendation and so on, but after that, what happens? They, they, they seem to have disappeared like, like the wind. You know, there was a little incident, which I, I'm sorry that it, it um, descended into what has happened. You know, it, it pains my heart, actually, that what happened a few, um, a year after the celebration of the 100th birthday, we had this... A period of non-parading, yes, as they call it. Crisis, yeah. you know, yeah. this hiatus, yeah. so to speak. Mm -hmm. But um, it is my hope that um, with the few people who are there, with the way they serve, they will present themselves as an example to those outside who will be willing to come in to give their service to, to, to the organization. As Captain Scarlett have just said, I mean, look upon um, the skills. We are, we are in a technological world these days. And whatever training and assistance you can give your people to come up to the level of competency in these, this technology, it will be a great help. 
Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. And, and well, well, before we go to you, James, I just wanted to, to reinforce a point um, as, as it relates to training. I know it's been also a busy year for the Defence Force because so far for this year, they were able to send participants to Antigua to participate, for example, in a potential junior officers NCO course. I think Private um, um, DeMarkey McDonald and Private Irvin Liber did six weeks on attachment in Antigua. And then right after that, they had the section commanders uh, training course where we had Lance Corporal Bacchus, uh, Lance Corporal Bacchus and Lance Corporal um, Lewis. They also participated in a section commanders course um, yes, in Antigua. And just to wrap it up, as we speak, um, as we speak, we have Sergeant Melvin Lindsay, who is on attachment and on duty at the Antigua Defence Force, and he's specialising in, in, in uh, a basic drills course I, that's I, been conducted I, by... I, I suppose mm. I was moving away from the formal military No, 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 I was going to come to that. Yes, to, I was going to come to, to that. And I know in, the, in a few weeks coming, hopefully leading into summer, they'll be going back to the matter of skills in terms of carpentry and so on as part of our the annual preparation for what we call the hurricane season. And care of the and, elderly and, and like first yes. aid and yes. so forth. Those yes. are, you know, uh, yes. uh, mm. riot drills and so, you know. Right. So, so um, um, I, I know that is taking place, that, that level of training in, in, in various areas is taking place. I accept, however, um, you know, the numbers are about 40 or something around there and it will be good to get it back up. And the other program that I know will be worked on to get me started is the community band. That project was started, we had about I think 15 persons who were doing training mm -hmm. at the centre in Davy Hill. Yes. But Davey the COVID, um, it was meant to be a community band because um, I think they were encouraging people. They don't have to be members of the defence. Right, from them, the yes. community. But they'll have yeah. to learn to march and play on parades like these. Right. So that's a programme. Um, I, think the, I think I could safely say that they had a set of instruments for that purpose. Yes. So it's just to get it restarted and, and, and up and, and running again. So those of you who are looking at us from... Um, on the GIU website or on the on the Facebook page, you'll see the troops now. They the are station. going into the police forming station. up in the police station for the formal um, 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 dismissal there under the command of the officer in charge, and that's why we here at the commentary booth uh, giving our our closing comments. So what do you do? We, 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 we just need. Uh, I know that there are a lot of um, ex RMDF members. Um, and police officers out yes. there that are listening right now, yes, yes. and we just want to uh, wish them well, big them up a little, yes, yes, you know, yes, because yes, yes. I mean they have served, and and I know that they'll be interested in what is happening. What is happening? That, that is correct. Uh, well, well um, is it appropriate that we could make mention to one member who we know is not doing well? Um, yes, this time? Private Lynch, yes. Yes, um, right. Lynch, I know. Um, uh, what's his first name again? James. Yes, Lynch, who is not uh, doing well. I know in the the ex members are. Uh, trying to arrange something to visit him today um you know i think he's staying by his sister yes. so we hope that that goes well as, um, uh, and, and we recognize all other persons who would have served in this organization the defense force uh, the police in the cadet corps wherever you are in the world you're listening or looking at this at any point we would have we wish to say we appreciate your service um, to our country and you have been um the the, the you, you have paved the road that the, the, those who are serving will follow, and we hope that others, in turn, will follow. All right? So we're now wrapping up. Um, um, we just got the signal from the, the, the control. So over to James for your final word. Yes, so um, I, I must say that I'm very, very pleased mm. and, and happy that, that my guidance has transcended mm. heights in yeah. that we have um, so ably in the commentary team today of, of course, by order of rank, Major retired, Joseph Gabriel Lynch. Mm -hmm. Captain retired too, um, Captain um, John Skerritt. We are, take, we are two and, captains and, and I'm going to take precedence white. because I'm older. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> by, uh, by order of rank <laughs> and, and age. Uh, age. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. Yeah. You know, this, this team, this team has really done well mm -hmm. over the years and, and I'm trying my very best to, to keep it together. Even though when I approached a, a certain retired major, he said to me, I'm, I'm, they're, getting up, they're, getting, they're getting up early is getting to me now these days. <laughs> yes. But no, um, you know, well done. I'm, I'm very happy that we were able to bring today's activity, today's parade, you know, to, to the people. And of course, you started without me. 
and that was commendable. You know, I'm, I'm very happy that I could just join in where necessary and, and to give my little two cents here and there. But you, as a team, James, you have done... James, as a military person, I said, don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know you gave me some, a lot of trouble, you know, as well. But, you know, I always have the final say uh, it, when, it, when it, it comes it, to... It would appear so. But, gentlemen, I'm, I'm saying thanks. Okay. You know, well, thank you very much. And, and I really mean, appreciate we, um, your, your, your yeah. showing your appreciation. Yes. And, 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 and as I said, we are happy to serve. Yeah. And that's what we do. And that's what we have been doing throughout our lives. Whether it be the defense force, the boys, scouts, whatever we may do. And it comes to this point. Even though we retired from being yeah. able to do the physical you've, marching. You've gone. Here you've gone. Serve. Yes. Way above and beyond. Thank you very to much. To ensure yes. that we, uh, yes. we, you know, we've done this. And I, I dare say successfully. So on behalf of all of you, I'm going to return us to the studio Thank at you this very time. Much. Yeah. Thank you very much.